All right, guys, let's take a look at our next example. Okay, so the problem over here is asking us to find the work done by this force as a particle moves along the following path. So, as far as I'm concerned, guys, this is where this course kind of begins. Okay, everything, this is a line integral problem, obviously, and everything before this is just easy stuff, kind of review of Math 204 or linear algebra and so on. This is where advanced calculus from this point onwards, uh, this is where it begins. And you should understand that a big chunk of this course is concerned with line integrals in some way, shape or form. So this is the very beginning of line integrals, but we're going to learn later on that topics such as um, path independence or Green's theorem and even Stokes theorem to a certain degree, two of the big three theorems that we're going to learn in this class uh, pertain to line integrals in some way. So it's a good idea to have a good basis in solving these guys. So first things first, you should understand that work done, we can calculate the work done by a force um, by evaluating the line integral. Before we continue in solving, in solving this problem, understand the motivation a little bit behind line integrals. If I was to ask you guys to solve a very simple integral, x squared y dx, most of you guys would give me an answer of x cubed y over 3 plus some constant that can contain perhaps some y's in it. Now this is correct, but solving this integral in this fashion assumes one very important thing, and that is that y is constant when it comes to x, right? With respect to x, y is a constant. However, that is a very particular case, right? In general, y does not need to be constant with respect to x. There can be some sort of a relationship that is not constant between y and x, as we see right here. And if that happens, then this is not the correct answer. If y is not a constant with respect to x, then we have to solve this problem in a different way, and this is where line integrals kind of come into play. And over the years that I've been teaching this class, I believe that the, one of the easiest ways to understand how to compute basic line integrals is to parameterize your functions. So before we tackle this problem, let's take a look at how to parameterize some common functions. Specifically, we're going to take a look at three types. So line integral for us right now is an exercise in parameterization, and this is what we're going to take a look at right now. So there are three different types of functions that um, I would like to teach you to parameterize. The first one is how to tackle horizontal and vertical lines. Type two would be just general functions, and the way we're gonna parameterize this is just simply to let x equal to t. And then our third type is how to deal with circles specifically. So when you have a circle, as we do over here, we should just kind of memorize that our parameterization is gonna take on this form, r of t is equal to r cos t, um, t uh, and r sine t. Perhaps, let's see if we can make this a bit bigger for those, those of you guys in the back, um, if you guys, so you guys can see them. So what does parameterization mean, guys? Well, parameterization is like saying, okay, we are interested in rewriting these functions using just one parameter. Later on, we'll see how to parameterize things using two parameters, but since there's only one integral, it's a single integral and not a double or triple integral, we are not allowed more than one parameter. So when it comes to parameterization, guys, to us this means we want to kind of fill in um, these things for each one of these functions. We want to know what r of t is, what dr is, and where t goes from. So we're going to do this for every one of these questions. So for the first one, it turns out that we have two pieces to our, um, to our graph over here. I'm not going to say it's a function because it's not but I'll call this piece piece one, and I'll call this piece piece two. So there's going to be um, two different parameterizations to do over here. So for the first piece, the way we're going to parameterize this horizontal line is that we're going to ask ourselves, what is the variable that changes as I go along this line? And they should always give us a direction over here. 
as I go along this line from here to here. Um, so you will, it's not going to take us long to realize that as we move along this line, it is actually the x value that changes and y, well, it remains constant at 1. So the way we're going to parameterize this, we're going to say, okay, our parameter is going to be the value that changes, t, and y kind of remains constant at 1, so it stays there, stays at 1. To find dr, you're simply going to take the derivative of this, so the derivative of t is just 1, so 1 dt, the derivative of 1 is 0. Continuing along, we're going to ask ourselves, okay, t starts where and goes where? Well, understanding that t is actually your x value, simply ask yourself, as you move from here to here, what is the smallest and largest x value? Well, x starts at minus 1, and where does x end? Well, it ends at a value equal to 3. And that is it. This is how you parameterize horizontal lines. Moving on to vertical lines, this time around, you're going to realize that your x value stays constant at 3, and your y value is the one that changes. So this is how you would begin that parameterization. Taking the derivative as our second step gives us 0 and dt. And this time, remember, x, or your parameter t, rather, represents your y value. So where does y go from as you move from here to here? And so y starts off at a value of 1 and ends up at a value of negative 2. Okay, so as you move from a to b, you're looking at the beginning and end y values this time. This is fairly straightforward. With this, you should be able to parameterize any horizontal or any vertical line. Now let's teach you how to parameterize any function. So when it comes to functions of x, in our case, it's the square root of x. We can pretty much always start by letting x equal to t, as long as it's y. And that's usually the easiest way because we are used to seeing functions um, with y being isolated for, right? Y, y in terms of x. So over here, if x was equal to t, now ask yourself, what would y be? And that's a simple answer. Simply take t and plug it into the function, right? If x is t, looking at the function itself, you will recognize that y is the square root of t. Next, we're going to take the derivative of this and find dr. So the der der derivative here is just going to be dt, and here it's going to be 1 over 2 root t, and always that little dt kind of trickles along. And ask yourself, where does t go from? Well, t represents your x value. So it's equivalent to asking, where does x begin, where does x end? Well, x starts at 0 and simply goes till 1, so those are going to be the bounds on t. And lastly, we move on to circles, and there's really nothing difficult to understand here because the parameterization of a circle is essentially always the same. It is r cos t, r sin t. So your job here is just to figure out what your radius r is. In this circle, looking at the equation or the graph, it's going to take you two seconds to realize that r is equal to 3. So our parameterization simply becomes 3 cos t and 3 sine t. Taking the derivative is going to give us dr. Let's give ourselves some room over here. So the derivative is going to give us dr. So in our case, it's going to be negative 3 sine t dt and 3 cos t dt. And t over here represents what? Understand t here is not an x or y value. You can't do that like you did over here, right? It's not like it's going from 3 to 0 or 3 to 3. Look at it carefully and realize that t over here is actually an angle, right? It is cos of an angle, sine of it's an angle. So you have to ask yourself, okay, where does this angle begin and where does it end? Angles always begin on the positive x-axis. They have a zero value here, and they need to sweep an angle of 90 degrees. So t would go from zero to 90 degrees, or zero to pi over two, because we like to use radians over here. And if you understand this much, guys, then it becomes a very easy topic to teach you guys. So here is the deal. First of all, this problem, let's go look at our problem now. This problem is asking us to calculate the work done by this function as go over this path over here. 
and we should first of all understand how to set up the main equation that we're trying to solve. Understand that the work done is this line integral, right, f dot dr. And what that basically means is that they're asking us to evaluate the following. f dot dr is pretty much take the x component, slap on dx, take the y component, slap on dy, take the z component, slap on dz, and integrate. So what the question is actually asking us to do is to evaluate the following integral. x, y squared, dx, and x squared, y, dy. This is what the question is asking us to do here. Learn how to set up the line integral is not very difficult whatsoever. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the problem here becomes that you cannot just say that this piece is x squared over 2 and y is constant because y is not constant with respect to x. And so this is where this parameterization comes into play. We are going to have to evaluate this line integral actually twice. Once over this path and once over this path over here. So let's take a look at the first one. So first of all, in order to evaluate the line integral over this path, let's call that integral w1. We need to parameterize this function, and the good news is we've done it right here. And in parameterizing, what we've actually done is figured out what to replace each one of these guys by. Every single place I see an x over here, I'm going to replace it by t. Every y here, is going to become the square root of t. Every dx is going to be this little guy here. Everywhere I see dy, I'm going to replace it with this piece right here. And all of a sudden, instead of having a function of two variables, I'll have it as a function of one variable t, which is going to account for this non-constant relationship between x and y. So let's plug those in and see what this integral looks like. So x, y squared is going to be this times this guy squared. So it's going to be t times the square root of t, all squared. Anywhere I see dx, I can simply write dt. Repeat the process here, x squared y. So x squared is t squared. y is the square root of t. And every dy becomes this piece right here. So 1 over 2 root t dt. And we must evaluate this integral from 0 to 1. So this is really not very challenging at all, guys. Let's just do this. It shouldn't take more than a minute to evaluate this integral. So this is going to become t times t, t squared. Integrating t squared gives us t cubed over 3. Over here, you should realize that these guys cancel out quite nicely. And once again, you're left with t squared over 2, which integrated gives us t cubed over 6. And we're going to let this go from 0 to 1, giving us a final answer of a third minus a sixth, or 1 sixth. Now since this problem has this second piece as well, we need to evaluate that integral also. So that's going to be a lot easier because over here we're going to replace every single x. Notice that this piece, by the way, is the same exact one as this piece here. So we're going to use these parameters inside over here to calculate this. The one thing I will bring your attention to is the fact that dx, right, this is x, y, dx, dy, dx is 0. That means this entire chunk disappears, and we only have to focus on this piece, replacing every x by 3, every y by t, and every dy by dt. So look at this for a second and realize this, only, this simply becomes 9t dt, going from 1 to minus 2. So 9t dt going from 1 to negative 2. And this is going to take a moment to finish. So this is going to become 9 over 2 t squared 
going from 1 to negative 2. If I plug in the top, I'll, this, will, this is going to become 4 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 9 is 18. Minus, take the bottom and plug it in. So 18 minus 9 over 2. Um, and that's going to give us, so 18 minus 4.5 essentially is 27 over 2. To get our final answer, guys, we're simply going to add this up. So the total work done is going to be 1 over 6 plus 27 over 2 for a grand total of 41 over 3 joules. And hopefully that clarifies a bunch of things about line integrals um, to you. Understand that if they ask for the work done, um, they're really asking you for line integrals and for the moment, Line integrals is really just an exercise in parameterization. Let's take a look at our next topic.